There's an old saying that goes, eat breakfast like a king, eat lunch like a prince, and eat dinner like a pauper. But does science back that up? Today I'm going over scientific studies on how breakfast versus lunch versus dinner size affects your blood sugar control and weight loss. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the result of other studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And today I will be talking about how the relative sizes of your different meals throughout the day affects your hunger, your hunger hormones, your insulin, your blood sugar, your triglycerides, and your weight. Then, as usual, at the end, I'll talk about some nuances to all these effects and different situations in which they may or may not apply. And I want to say up front that the effects I'm going to talk about in this video are some of the coolest effects I've ever covered here, in my opinion. And I'm actually going to be tweaking my own lifestyle based on the results I found while doing the research for this video. And this video topic idea came from a question I got over on Patreon from one of our patrons. And if you are interested in getting involved in thinking of these video ideas and asking questions of your own, then head on over to the Patreon, which is linked in the description below. So first, I just want to briefly set up the logic of the studies we'll be talking about today. So people who subscribe to Calories In versus Calories Out, or CISO, would say that it shouldn't matter how many of your calories you have in breakfast versus lunch versus dinner, because all that matters at the end of the day is how many total calories you had throughout the day versus how many calories you burned. But there's another camp that would say that it matters whether you have more of your calories at breakfast or lunch or dinner. And the studies I'll be talking about today are primarily looking at how things differ between a big breakfast and small dinner versus a small breakfast and big dinner. And generally they leave lunch alone. But I will be talking about lunch effects at the end, so stick around till the end if you are curious about lunch size. And the studies I will be talking about today are randomized controlled trials, which is the highest quality study design we can get. And I want to note, just at the beginning here, that when I say big breakfast, I will be referring to big breakfast plus small dinner. And when I say small breakfast, I will be referring to small breakfast plus big dinner, because the total number of calories in a day is always kept the same across these studies. So in order to have a bigger breakfast, you need to take those calories from somewhere else, and they take them from dinner. And the first study I will be talking about looked at big breakfasts versus small breakfasts in terms of their effects on diet-induced thermogenesis which are the calories you burn off just from eating food, from the process of processing that food and making it usable. And these calories get burned off just from eating. It doesn't matter if you're laying around or running around. It's just from the act of processing that food. And this study found that regardless of whether people ate low or high calorie meals at breakfast versus dinner, people burn off 2.5 times as many calories after a breakfast meal than after a dinner meal. And this did not vary statistically significantly between big breakfasts versus small breakfasts or big dinners versus small dinners. It was just across the board, we tend to have more diet-induced thermogenesis after breakfast than after dinner. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but it doesn't actually point to an advantage of big breakfasts, interestingly, because either way, you just burn off more calories in the morning regardless of how much you eat. And if you're curious about the specific numbers, three hours after eating breakfast, you would burn off about 30 calories on average when lumped across these low and high calorie meals. And after dinner, you would burn off about 12 calories on average, all just from diet-induced thermogenesis. So really, that's a pretty small difference in the grand scheme of things. And more interestingly, I think, they found that eating a meal at breakfast led to less of a blood sugar rise than eating that very same meal at dinner. So after a low-calorie meal, people had 17% higher blood sugar when that meal was had at dinner versus breakfast, whereas for a high-calorie meal, people had 44% higher blood sugar after having that meal at dinner compared to breakfast. And unsurprisingly, they found the same effect with insulin. So having a high-calorie meal at dinner elicited a 40% higher insulin response than having that very same meal at breakfast. So what this suggests so far is that eating more calories earlier in the day is better for insulin and blood sugar compared to eating those same calories at dinner. And I've been focusing on this one study as our example here, but other studies have replicated these findings, including a really ridiculously well-controlled one that had everyone have the same pre-meal just to get a baseline, then had them all wait eight hours, so fast eight hours, and then eat either the breakfast meal or the dinner meal, and then have to lay down for six hours. So they completely replicated the conditions between this early in the day meal versus this late in the day meal, and still found these same effects on 
how much diet induced thermogenesis you had as well as insulin and blood sugar. And now for another interesting finding, regardless of calorie count, people felt more satiated by dinner than by breakfast. So a low calorie dinner gave people the same feeling of satiety as a high calorie breakfast. And in fact, a low calorie breakfast actually made people feel even more hungry than they did before breakfast. And I feel very validated by this finding because I have always noticed that if I eat something small in the morning, I get way hungrier within the next hour than if I ate nothing at all. So something about eating a small breakfast can make a lot of us feel very hungry compared to not eating at all or compared to a bigger breakfast. And what this implies is that a high calorie breakfast and a low calorie dinner is a more effective combination for reducing hunger throughout the day. So for a little interim summary before we move on to the bigger, even more interesting studies, what we have seen so far is that you burn off more calories from the process of digesting your food in the morning compared to the evening. And having a bigger breakfast gives you an advantage in terms of insulin and blood sugar and hunger. But does this actually translate into real world weight loss? For our example case here, I will be focusing on a big study with almost 100 people that had people do one of two diets over the course of 12 weeks. One of those diets was the big breakfast diet where they had 700 calories at breakfast, 500 calories at lunch, and 200 calories at dinner. And the other group was the big dinner group, which just had it perfectly flipped. So they had 200 calories at breakfast, 500 calories at lunch, and 700 calories at dinner. And importantly, the total number of calories in a day was matched between these two groups. And all that varied was how these calories were divvied up throughout the day. And lunch was the same between these two groups. And importantly, all of these people were at a calorie deficit, so they were all expected to lose weight. But what the researchers wanted to know is which group lost more weight and had more beneficial effects on a bunch of different parameters I'll be telling you about. And they found that the group who had a big dinner and small breakfast lost eight pounds over the course of these three months, whereas the group that had a big breakfast and a small dinner lost 20 pounds over the course of these same three months. So that is two and a half times more weight lost just from having bigger breakfasts and smaller dinners. And here we have yet another glaring counterpoint to the idea of calories in versus calories out. And the researchers also found that after all this weight loss, people had lower insulin, triglycerides, and blood sugar. But importantly, they found that people who had the big breakfast lost two to three times more points in terms of their triglycerides and insulin and blood sugar. And they also found that after a test meal that they did at the end of the study where all the participants ate the same meal at the same time, people who had been doing the big breakfast over the course of the last three months had much lower insulin and blood sugar responses to that very same meal. Now, all of these benefits of big breakfasts could just be driven by the fact that big breakfasts cause people to lose way more weight. But other studies have found that even without weight loss, when people are on calorie maintenance diets, people still get this improvement in insulin resistance, even in diabetes and PCOS, when they eat bigger breakfasts and smaller dinners. And what's even crazier is that ghrelin, a hunger hormone, actually went down more in the group who had bigger breakfasts. Which is pretty crazy because usually when you lose weight, your ghrelin goes up because you kind of have a natural increase in hunger to compensate for that weight loss. But instead, the people who lost more weight by eating big breakfasts had lower ghrelin responses to meals or to getting hungry after meals and had higher satiety immediately after meals. So to wrap up this study, people who ate bigger breakfasts over the course of 12 weeks lost two and a half times more weight, had two to three times better improvements in insulin and triglycerides and blood glucose, and despite that increased weight loss, they were actually less hungry at the end of the study and at the end of all that weight loss. And now a quick note on lunches. There aren't as many studies on big lunches versus other meals, but a study has found that bigger lunches are better than bigger dinners for weight loss and insulin. So overall, the pattern that is emerging across these studies is that it is better to front load your calories earlier in the day and then taper them off later in the day. And it's not so much about specifically breakfast or your first meal, but rather just having more calories earlier and fewer calories later. And as a note that I imagine quite a few of you are thinking about, these studies do not address whether it's better to eat breakfast or fast in the morning. All they are addressing is whether it's better to eat a big breakfast or a small breakfast. So if you are a morning faster, what you can take out of these studies is that it seems like eating more of your calories at lunch is gonna be way better than eating your calories at night. So if you choose not to eat breakfast, these studies do not tell you if that's gonna be better or worse than having a big breakfast. But if you do fast in the morning, eat more calories as early as you can rather than saving them all up 
for nighttime. If you find these kinds of results cool and want to support me in making these videos to share this science with you, then please consider donating on Patreon or GoFundMe. On the Patreon, we've got Q&As and bonus content, and I'm actually working on an overhaul there based on your feedback, so stay tuned for new perks there. And then the GoFundMe is if you want to do a one-time donation to help support me in making these videos. And I really, really appreciate all of you who help support me in making these videos because they take a long time to make. Pretty much two-thirds of my weekend gets spent on making these videos. And I don't really monetize in terms of, I don't do any sponsorships, I don't sell any products, and I actually disable the type of ads that make the most money, which are the ones that you can't skip or that interrupt the videos. So anything you donate on Patreon or GoFundMe or nice comments you leave really mean a lot to me and help keep me going with making these videos. I hope you found these results as cool as I did, and I hope this can help guide some lifestyle tweaks if you were thinking about changing your breakfast size anyway. And if you like this video, please like and share it so that other people can get this information and hopefully improve their health and weight loss as well. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell below to stay up to date on all these studies. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.